Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Banana Pi M5 single board computer. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 competitor with onboard flash storage. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Banana Pi M5, indicated as a BPI M5 on the back of the box. And I purchased this from AliExpress, where it cost me $84, which converted to £64.32. So let's open the thing up. Looks uh, quite straightforward, just like that. And uh, there we are, the usual anti static bag, which is is it sealed? It is sealed. So we'll bring in Mr. Scissors, is here. Got it in the wrong way up. You can hopefully let us in up here like that will we get it right this time yes there we are we've got in and here is our new single board computer it's always nice to open up another new single board computer and as you can see the banana pi m5 is a raspberry pi form factor board in fact it's very slightly different in size to a raspberry pi apparently it's a couple of millimeters different in each direction but effectively this is a, a raspberry pi form factor single board computer so let's turn our attention to the specification at the heart of the machine the system on a chip is an amlogic s905 x3 which has four arm cortex a55 cores running at up to two gigahertz as well as an ARM Mali G31 MP2 GPU. On one side of the SOC, we then find four gigabytes of low power DDR4 RAM. And then on the other side, we find this chip here, which is the onboard flash storage. Specifically, this is 16 gigabytes of EMMC flash storage. If we cut out to a wider shot and then flick the board over, you will see that underneath we've also got a micro SD card slot, hardly a surprise. So we can boot the Banana Pi M5 either from the internal EMMC flash storage or from a micro SD card. And I understand the boot order is EMMC flash storage first, then micro SD card, which is not the way around I would like it, but uh, there we are, I'm sure we can cope. And we can use up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. If we flip the board back the other way, stop it getting too disoriented, and we turn our attention to the main long edge, we find on the end the USB-C connector, which is used to power the board, and next to that, a reset switch. And then in the middle, there is a single full-size HDMI 2.0 connector, which offers up to 4K output at up to 60 frames a second. There's then a switch here, which is labeled just behind it as SW3, which I believe is a power switch. And then on the end, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio connector, just like those we don't find on so many other devices these days. Gyrating to the first shortage, we then come across a very familiar configuration with here gigabit ethernet and then four type A USB 3 ports. Spinning 90 again, we then find a three pin UART connector, and then next to that, a 40 pin GPIO connector, which I'm pretty certain is Raspberry Pi compatible. Last, but by no means least, if we rotate again, we get to the second short edge, which boasts an infrared and IR receiver. And then behind here, there's another switch, tiny little thing in there, and this switch is labeled, I'm pretty certain, SW1. The quality control sticker is partially on top of the switch's label, but I think that is SW1. And the Banana Pi M5's wiki page says that the board has three switches for reset, power, and U boot. And I'm not quite sure which switch this happens to be, because also on the board up here, nestled behind the GPIO connector, we find another switch labeled SW4, clearly switch 4. It is the fourth switch we've found on the board, but the board's defined in its specs as having three switches. So I'm a little bit confused about what all these switches do. One of the switches, as we saw, is labeled reset, so we know what that switch does. The other three perform other functions. And I have to admit, I'm a big fan of printing what a switch does next to it on the PCB. But maybe I'm just being a bit old fashioned. I'm sure I'll find out what all these switches do in the fullness of time. 
Finally, I should point out that unlike on the Raspberry Pi, we don't on the Banana Pi M5 have a camera connector, a CSI connector, and we don't have a display connector, a DSI connector. And we also don't have onboard Wi-Fi or onboard Bluetooth. And this is both a surprise and a shame because other Banana Pi boards do have wireless networking, but sadly, it's not here on the Banana Pi M5, so we're going to have to rely on Ethernet or on a USB Wi-Fi dongle for our network connection. Greetings. Here I am back again, and I've got the Banana Pi M5 connected to my laptop, where I'm using a program called the Amlogic Burning Tool to write an Android image to the board's EMMC flash storage. All of this is explained in the Banana Pi M5 wiki, where there are links to download both the burning tool and the Android image itself. And when all of this is complete, we can hook up a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, and an ethernet lead. And as you can see, I've also added a small heatsink for good measure. So let's turn on the power, and the Banana Pi M5 will begin to boot up into Android. This will take a little bit of time, and so we'll speed on through. And here we are on the Android desktop. And what we basically have here is a very stylishly presented development image. There's very little pre-installed behind these panels here. If we look, at, for example, at an online video, it's just waiting to have things added in. If we look, for example, at my apps, you'll see what's on the machine at the moment. There is a clock, which is Always good, we can find out what time it is. I sometimes struggle to know what day it is, let alone what time it is, so that's very handy to have. We've got Droid settings. Let's just check out, for example, with display screen resolution here. Should be 1080p. It is 1080p at 60 hertz. That's clearly all working. There's a file browser, normal sort of Android stuff. There's nothing to look at on this machine, of course, but the stuff is, is there. We've got the media center. If we want to play files, again, I'm sure that would work. That's fine, nothing exciting with that. And there is an app installer, as you can see. If you just click on app installer, you'll see this is not the Play Store. This is simply an application to install OPKs from a local drive. And uh, if I scan a local drive, there are none there. But if you had files to install that way, you could install via that method. There is a web browser there. Let's just click on it to prove it's there. This, I think, is a web browser for testing more than anything else. So, but we'll try typing in explainingcomputers.com as a random web address and click up there to make it work. And there we are, it works, that's good. We can get to web pages, they're loaded nice and smartly, that's uh, perfectly good. But really I think the Android image here is something that's waiting for you to do something very exciting with it. So what I'm going to do now is to install a desktop Linux distro. Right. Here I am back again. We're now running Ubuntu Mate 20.04, which is installed on the Banana Pi M5's onboard EMMC storage. This is all working very well, although installation was not trivial. As to set things up, I first needed to erase the EMMC and then to write an operating system image for Ubuntu Mate to a microSD card. I then had to boot up from the microSD card and running the operating system from the microSD card to image the operating system for a second time to the EMMC on the board. And I did this using a utility called BPI Tools. And in the end, this all worked absolutely fine, but you have got that intermediate step of first installing the operating system to a microSD card and then installing it from the microSD card to the internal flash storage. So I would caution that whilst everything is working very nicely, there were little things I had to overcome in the process, and that the Banana Pi M5 really is not a board for a newbie SBC user. Anyway, as I've said, once you get it working, it's pretty good. Let's just look up here, and we'll look at a, about this computer, and you will see there we are, the system monitor confirms we're on a Banana Pi running Ubuntu Mate 20.04. If we look under resources, you'll see things are running along nice and frugally. We've got our quad-core system here, all the CPUs, not doing very much as we're idling along, only about a 700 megabytes of memory being used as uh, things are running along here. If we look across to the, uh, the menu on the left, the main menu, you'll see this is a standard install of Ubuntu Mate. I really like Ubuntu Mate, great operating system, 
loads of things are pre-installed here. You really have got everything you need straight out of the box once you've installed the operating system itself. I have though added in GIMP, which we'll test out in a second. I've also added in somewhere down here, I think under sound and video, I've added Caden Live, which we'll also use for a test in a minute. Under a system tools, let's go to the terminal. Bring up the terminal there. Let's do an LSBLK just so you can see drives on the system, which is just our internal flash storage. Let's just clear that. And uh, let's just do a test of the speed of the MMC flash storage. I'm sure you want to see that. I think I've got the command ready to paste in. There we are, we're using HD parameters. It'll give us an error when it first tries to identify the drive, but it will give us a speed. So let's do that. We have to put in the password. I forgot that. Banana pie, if I got that right. I have, it's given us the error I anticipated. And the timing is going to be, oh, it's exciting. What is 144 megabytes a second, which is not a colossal speed. It's not too bad for internal EMMC flash storage. It's better than we get from a micro SD card. So having uh, done that, I think we'll do a few more tests. I think first of all, we'll go into Firefox. Let's see how the browser is working. Coming up, there we are. We've got the world's favorite website comes up fine. But more significantly, I'm sure you're wondering, what is YouTube playback like? And I can assure you there is no hardware playback here. Everything is playing back through software and YouTube playback is not very good at all. But I will show you my test clip. Actually, maybe it'll be better when I'm uh, showcasing there. Maybe it's gonna work fine this time. But anyway, here's the test clip. Let's make sure it's in 1080p. I think it's gone to something else. There we are, there is 1080p. And we'll also bring up stats for nerds. And there, actually it isn't too bad. You see, I told you it was terrible, but actually that's better. Oh, you never know what's gonna happen, do you? That's actually not too bad at all. If I keep uh, things playing like that, we've got drop frames clearly, but that's actually usable performance, isn't it? So uh, I, I spoke too soon. My earlier tests were obviously not as, well, they weren't as good as this one. So there we are. We're getting reasonable YouTube playback here in the browser on the Banana Pi M5. Anyway, let's uh, close that down and let's do another test. I want to go into Caden Live, which I mentioned earlier, down in sound and video, there's Caden Live. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I've been testing Caden Live on lots of different single board computers, most recently on the four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 and the Rock Pi X. And there I had a test edit put in, a very small test edit, here it, here it is, just to, uh, we could test things out. Some ducks, as you can see, 10 seconds of ducks, not a fantastically complicated edit. It does play here. We've got proxy clips enabled here, so it should play reasonably well. It doesn't play that well. It doesn't play as well as it did on the Raspberry Pi 4 or the Rock Pi X, and certainly not as well as it would play on the Jetson Nano in, the, in Caden Live. But the real reason I've got this here is so we can do a render test. We can go to render and we can run the same script to render out this 10 second clip of ducks in the 1080p as I did on the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte model and the Rock Pi X, which took respectively 36 and 35 seconds to run this script. So let's start it on the Banana Pi M5 and it'll take a second to run through. So we'll speed on through. And here we are coming to an end. It's getting very exciting. I think it's gonna be longer than we saw on the Raspberry Pi 4 or the Rock Pi X. What's it gonna be? Always, always a wait at the end, 47 seconds. Yes, quite a lot longer to render out the same clip here on the Banana Pi M5 than on the, a Raspberry Pi 4 or a, a Rock Pi X. Anyway, that is a result. Let's do a, a final test. Let's get rid of that and let's go to GIMP the fantastic graphics package we're all got available to us for free. That's wonderful. Here is GIMP, let's run up GIMP. There we are, GIMP 2.10. And uh, what we're gonna do here is a test. I've also done lots of computers over quite a while now. We're going to do a new document, if I can remember what I'm doing, a new document. We'll use the default 1920-1080. And we're going to render using filters, the lava filter, which takes a little bit of time, so it's a good thing to test comparing computers. So we'll bring up lava and we'll use the defaults, and I'll let you know that on the Raspberry Pi 4, this took 17.3 seconds, and on the Rock Pi X, it took 16.0 seconds. So let's bring in the clock and see how long it takes to run on the Banana Pi M5. 
Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? How long is it going to take? I think we'll again speed on through. And there we are. We have a result of 22.6 seconds. And so once again, the Banana Pi M5, at least in these tests, shows it's not quite as fast, it's not as nippy as comparable competitor single board computers. The Banana Pi M5 is a very solid single board computer, which I've really enjoyed using while making this video. This said, as we've just seen, it's not as powerful as a Raspberry Pi 4, at least not in the tests I've done here, and not having Wi-Fi on the board, not having wireless networking, really does count against it, particularly at its price point. This said, the M5 does have a full-size HDMI socket, and I'm a big fan of those. And running the board's operating system from onboard EMMC Flash is a great improvement over using a microSD card. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.